It seems like everywhere I look, I see ads for political campaigns. I'm a recent college graduate. I have a full-time job. I run a home business. I'm also planning my wedding and getting ready to move into a new house. Who has time to stay on top of local political candidates? Don't get me wrong, voting is important to me. I come from a family of political activists. But, like many other 20-somethings, life can sometimes get in the way of my civic involvement. Local elections are coming up in Orange County, and my colleague, Fred Smoller, asked me to take a look at a video that he posted on YouTube. What I saw was something that I think would shock even the most politically active citizen. Is there anybody here who thinks that I would be safe sitting in that chair or that chair? When they're trying to make policy and make decisions, uh, Mr. Rocco just votes no, he's contrary. He lashes out. So now I get to choose between either thug number one or thug number two. So who wins? Well, I guess it's thug number two. He's had a big impact in the sense that he's interfered with the board's ability to do their business. Kim, I thought you were better than that. Snappy, snappy, snappy. This thing was a drag. This was the first that I had ever heard of this Mr. Rocco. And it was the first time I had ever seen a school board meeting. You have spent 22 months making political remarks, placing dolls, Coke bottles, signs, and pictures before you on the dais, and making a mockery out of being a board member. Mr. Rocco, most people in the community think that you're crazy, but you're unprofessional, and in most cases, you are wrong. In terms of education policies and that which we do on a regular basis to ensure that our kids get a quality education, Mr. Rocco has not really participated, in my view. I made it a point from the very first time I was elected not to go to closed sessions so I could tell you the truth. So nobody could hold me back. Why didn't you interview my uh, investigator, register person? Mr. Rocco, if you can stay on to the item at hand about the, the board I bylaws. Am on the item. We care about our employees. We care about our community. We are done dealing with this kind of behavior, and I'm hopeful that Mr. Rocco will choose his words more carefully when he is in public session and doesn't breach this violation. This is Kim Nichols. She is the president of the Orange Unified School Board in the city of Orange, California. Ms. Nichols is furious. So are many residents of the community. The source of their anger is Steve Rocco. He's the man in the blue knit cap and dark sunglasses. Mr. Rocco was elected to the school board in November of 2004, despite the fact that he never attended a school board meeting, never campaigned, and never showed up to any candidate forums. He was unknown to teachers and the district, and only barely known to his neighbors, an unemployed recluse who lived with his elderly parents. But now as one of seven trustees, he oversees a district with 31,000 students and a $250 million budget. I wondered how many young people and their parents living in the city of Orange even knew who Steve Rocco was. All I could find on the internet was that Steve Rocco was a famous skateboarder. Maybe people at the local skate park knew more about him. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Do you know of any famous skateboarders? Chad Muska, Dustin Golan. Lucky Lassick, Tony Hawk. Steve Rocco. Do you know who Steve Rocco is? Yeah. Yeah. Who is he? A professional skater. Did you know that Steve Rocco is on the school board? No. No. Steve Rocco, the pro skater, is in the school board? I have to admit, I didn't know he was on the school board either. Does that make me crazy? I began to realize that we were talking about two different people. Does that make me crazy? There was plenty of information on the internet about Steve Rocco, the skateboarder but nothing on Steve Rocco, the school board candidate. Nevertheless, the people who voted for him must have felt that he was the best person to do the job. So, I went back to Fred's video to see how he got elected in the first place. A few months before the election, Mr. Rocco left his home and rode his bicycle down to the registrar of voters. He filled out a single page form, the only requirement to become a candidate. Unlike most other local races, he did not have to gather any signatures or pay a modest filing fee. On the form, he wrote that he was a teacher, although he had not taught full-time for more than 20 years. Phil Martinez ran for the same seat, 
He was a DTA president and had three kids in the district and actively campaigned. He listed his occupation as park ranger. Knowing little about the race when most voters came to the end of the lengthy ballot, they selected Rocco, the teacher, over Martinez, the park ranger. Rocco received 24,000 votes, 54% of the 46,000 cast. That was my first time running for school board. And the reason why I ran is because I have three kids in the district. At the time, I, they were all pretty much in elementary school and junior high. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, that everything was in place for these kids, not just my kids, but all kids, do what's right for them. People in 2004 knew they were going to vote for the presidential candidates. They may have known some people on the city council, their state legislators, some of the propositions. And then I think a great majority of them got down to the to this Orange School Board and saw in this one seat, they saw Phil Martinez, uh, Park Ranger, versus uh, Steve Rocco, teacher. Uh, and I think for most people who voted and knew nothing else, let's see, Park Ranger, educator. This is easy. We're going to vote for the educator. When the election results came in, people were shocked. A stream of reporters tried to interview Rocco, including, he says, Katie Corrick, but Rocco turned them all down. District officials tried to meet him, but Rocco ignored them. He also refused to give the district his telephone number or email address, or a picture of him to post on their website or at the district headquarters. Mail sent to him was returned unopened. The law requires trustees to be fingerprinted so they can visit the schools, but Rocco refused. The press called him the mystery trustee, and many people questioned if he would even show up to his first board meeting. But show up he did, and on December 9, 2004, the public got its first look at the man they elected to help lead their school district. We're living in a time of secret organizations. We're living in a time of, of corruption, and mostly a time of dictatorship. Aiding and abetting the drug and human cargo trade is only part of the problem. You change things here, you change things nationwide. The world is watching. Doing my job as trustee and fighting organized crime are one and the same. You think that you're in heaven, you're in hell. <clears throat> Children, the infirm, the indigent, the innocent, the defenses, they shouldn't be excuses to make money. I am and have always been the anti-corruption candidate. Io ti amo te caro papà. 9 de novembre era la prima giornata che, ho, che hai perso questa guerra qua de lo partnership. Tutto che io faccio è per te. I'm against drugs, and I probably have lost more uh, to the drug situation than anybody else. I've lost relatives, I've lost friends, I've lost my job, I've been set up. Uh, but how do you find out about that? You don't. You know, and just think about the newspapers in the past couple of months. Uh, in the last couple of months, I've been two death attempts, stalking, uh, the police reports are right here. Have you heard anything? Of course you haven't. And it all deals with the drug situation, trying to protect their uh, whatever. But, and, and it's not only just marijuana or whatever. They don't bring the stuff over with uh, burrows. They bring it pharmaceuticals, your drugstore, the big ones, Albertsons. Believe me, the CEO, son of Albertsons, set me up. Have you ever heard anything? Have you read the story? No. Set him up, and he's dead. Our investigation hasn't shown that any one of you has any problems with partnership, and I'm talking about organized crime. This administration right here, you have nothing to worry about. We've done a good investigation. There's nothing here on you. But I would seriously have you reconsider your relationship with the Orange Unified School District because that is another matter altogether. Over the next three years, Rocco abstained or voted no on virtually all school issues, including such routine matters as the adoption of the minutes and repeatedly disrupted meetings. He also refused to attend closed sessions in which sensitive issues regarding students and district personnel are discussed. Please direct your comments to Orange Unified Look, School District. Do this or you're not I'm, I'm not going to let you do it unless it as regard to Orange Unified School District. Excuse me for your guarantee. Uh, you know, let me get through this, all right? 
Let me get, get to it. the portion with which uh, so pertains anyway, to Orange so Unified anyway, School District. Uh, San Juan Capistrano wrote a uh, editorial. Mr. Rocco regularly antagonized other trustees and members of the public. Several meetings had to be quickly adjourned if, to avoid if, a physical fine. confrontation. If, okay. Next time you'll be arrested if you touch me. Gotcha, Kathy. I said jail time, <clears throat> Mr. Rocco. Did you vote yes or no? You don't touch me. You understand that? What? You touch me. You know what? Me. I'm going to recess this meeting. Thank you. If you're bored, you're welcome to leave, Mr. Ortega. Someday tell us about your brother who was employed here. Mr. Rocco, oh. I think you need to be quiet, okay? No, I think I need to keep going. You know, you're not here for the children. I'm not? Don't personalize it. Now you have employees. Now you're talking about a brother of mine who passed away. He isn't, well, wasn't it a drug? No Mrs. Nichols, wasn't it okay, a drug? Mrs. Enough. Nichols, yes, I would Mrs. like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. In October of 2006, the board censured Mr. Rocco for his unruly conduct. Mr. Rocco, in turn, sued the district for allegedly violating his right to free speech. The lawsuit was summarily dismissed for lack of merit, and the judge ordered Mr. Rocco to reimburse the district $37,000 for attorney's fees and costs. But this was less than the more than $100,000 the district has spent on legal fees. This issue was more serious than I think people realized. Would we make the same mistake again and vote for someone like this to be in charge of our children's education? I wanted to find out how informed people really are about current politics. Did you vote in the last school board election? Yes. And how much research did you do before you voted? I didn't do any research. What are the propositions? I'm sorry, I don't know. That I have no clue. Do you know who your congressperson is? I don't. I'm ashamed to say. Oh, please don't ask me. Do you know who your supervisor is? I don't know that either. I don't know either. Do you know who your congressperson is? Yes. Who is it? Um, uh, off the top of my head? Uh, what's his name? Um, actually, I don't. I know him. And I don't, but, um, let's see, it's Republican, and it's, um, I'm embarrassed by it, to tell you the truth. I do know who he is, but I can't, in front of the camera, it's his hard. name right now, right. yeah. I was a little worried by some of the responses I was getting. How could people possibly be prepared for the next election? What can you do? Maybe he was right. What can you do? You know, if you're getting a lot of responses like this, the greatest concern is how to get people involved. I have not in the past researched school district candidates, but in the future I will. It took some time for people in the district to realize that they had elected someone they really didn't know. Then they decided to do something about it. Two years ago, our community became the laughing stock when we voted Mr. Rocco into office. We have sat quietly while he rants incoherently about things that are unrelated to running the school district. He is not here for the benefit of the children or our community. Quite frankly, Mr. Rocco, we've had enough of your nonsense. And secondly, you know, every, every, just about every meeting that we have up here, Mr. Rocco is out here running at the mouth. You know, I'm kind of sick and tired of that, so are the parents that are out here. And if it's possible that there are still citizens of Orange who need convincing that Rocco is unfit to serve on this board because of his blatant disregard for the well-being of our children and his undeniable dereliction of duty, I urge them to go to YouTube.com, search Rocco Trustee. There you'll have a front row seat where you'll get to see his circus antics, nonsensical blathering, and paranoid rants. I would love to see the R word, recall. Thank you, Mr. Rosas. I am tonight presenting to Mr. Rocco a uh, notice of intent to recall. It's Dr. Terry Rasmussen who's trying to get uh, over 11,000 signatures by the 5th of December to put this on the ballot. Thank you. Because you, you ought to get some of the video and release it to the television stations. Correct. This is something I think you have to see and hear to believe. It's, it's hard to believe it even when you see it. Now, how come you waited two and a half years to start a recall? To turn in over 11,000 valid signatures by December 5th. December 5th is the official date, correct. You've got a lot of concerned people already that support your efforts. Absolutely. And you think you're going to find 11,000? It's good. Yeah, we'll find it. It's, just, it's a little bit hard over the summer, but we are, um, you know, people, if they come to the door, are happy to sign this. I wanted to know if people in Orange County had learned anything from this story. So I went to visit my alma mater. 
I talked to Professor Donna Cucanato, who recently showed the same school board footage of Mr. Rocco to her students. I think all of us were so surprised and unaware of how much disruption goes on and how much wasting of our money goes on. And I think that that will, that will be something that they'll carry with them. There will be a difference in what we do at our next elections just because we've seen this. Donna and I discussed the idea that maybe the internet could be better used as a source for information on candidates. So I went to meet a couple of students from Donna's class to see what we could come up with. We searched our favorite website to see what kind of information we could find on political candidates. This was the only Steve Rocco we could find on Facebook, not the one we were looking for. Yet it was easy to find numerous pages on other political figures like Hillary Clinton and George Bush. Orange County Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez is here. Why wasn't there any information about local school board candidates? If we publicize this huge issue, then and people will understand that this is what happens when people make poor judgments or when they don't take the time to get to know candidates. I thought the students had great ideas, but the one person I hadn't consulted with yet was my colleague, Fred Smoller, who posted the footage on YouTube in the first place. I thought that, the that it was a real cautionary tale. That's what this is. It's a cautionary tale of uh, what happens when people are uninformed. We have the lowest voting turnout, and that's just for the presidency. In local elections, it, it's sometimes lower than 20 percent. School board, sometimes as low as 12 percent. So how far does it have to fall before we're no longer a democracy? I think that uh, we have to go to all of the high schools, all the future voters, and, um, and show it and present the problem and ask the young people how to solve it. What can we learn from the Rocco fiasco? What's broken in our political system and how can it be fixed? A frequent response is that voters are at fault, that they are apathetic and ill-informed. It's Civics 101. You have uh, the public uh, needs to take a long look in the mirror in the Orange Unified School District and said, how did we let that happen? Voters certainly have to do their job, but they are not fully to blame. Citizens need useful information if they are going to cast informed votes. This typically comes from the candidates and the press. For example, in higher profile races, candidates work hard to get their message out. They also challenge their opponent's qualifications and positions. But this takes money, which candidates for low ballot races such as school board typically do not have. Rocco spent less than $1,000, and Phil Martinez less than $6,000. This is simply not enough to reach the more than 100,000 eligible voters in the race. Candidates can place a 200-word statement in the ballot guide sent out by the Registrar of Voters. In this election, it cost $2,068. Martinez had a statement in the voter guide. Rocco did not, which probably should have been a clue to voters about the seriousness of Rocco's campaign. The media is another important source of information about candidates. As democracy's watchdogs, we count on the media to bark when something is amiss. However, neither the local TV news programs, the Los Angeles Times, or the Orange County Register had a single story about this school board race. This is a case where the media had a responsibility to, to take another step, to dig a little bit harder. It appeared as though it was another school board race. There's, there's more than a, uh, a dozen school districts in Orange County, and it's impossible for us to cover all of those races. Another problem is voter fatigue. In addition to the presidency, Congress, state and local offices, voters had to decide 17 ballot propositions on topics such as stem cell research, tribal gaming, and changes to the state's three strikes law. By the time people got down to local races for school board, many were exhausted. And then, when they got to the school board race, the information available to them, the ballot designation, was wrong. Remember, Rocco's ballot designation said he was a teacher, although he was unemployed. Whose job was it to make sure that his ballot designation was accurate? We asked the Registrar of Voters, Mr. Neil Kelly. The main thing that the election code, and that's the statute that I have to go by, says it's your principal vocation, occupation, profession for the last year, for the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you were a paralegal for the last five years, you could list paralegal on your ballot designation. You sign a declaration stating that that's the truth. In other words, we're not a policing agency to look into that. 
so if I said I was a brain surgeon, right, uh, and I put that down, would that go down? Sure, uh, but now here's where it kicks in: is there's a 10-day review period. So people that know you or may not know that you're a brain surgeon could challenge that designation. But they call you up and they say, "I'm Smoller's not a brain surgeon." They do all the time. And uh, and what do you do? Well, we refer them to a court. Uh, so, for example, they could file a case in court. It's an emergency hearing, and a judge at that point would make the determination based on evidence. If you came in and were able to prove that you were a brain surgeon, then the court could likely rule in your favor. In the case of Orange Unified School District uh, candidate Steve Rocco, whose responsibility was it to challenge uh, the veracity of his statement? Anyone in the public. In this election, no one challenged Rocco's ballot designation. Recall activists were unable to gather the 11,000 valid signatures necessary to put the recall question on the ballot of a regularly scheduled election. So they halted the signature drive to spare the district the expense of a costly special election. Other school board watchers say the recall was unsuccessful because it got a late start and because the teachers union was not actively involved. I'd like to thank you for a two-year dictatorship, uh, which was wonderful. I'd like to thank you for the recall, which was the three women board members up here. And I'd like to thank you for the two attempts on my life, which the media didn't cover. Uh, it didn't matter anyway, because the recall didn't go through. The people have already spoken. If you did not want me here, you had your chance to get rid of me. Okay, you had your chance. Let's give you another chance in November. Increasing informed participation is one of the major challenges our political system faces. People are busier than ever before and they need all the help they can get. Among the changes that have been suggested are the use of the internet to disseminate information about local races, having all elections done by mail, reducing the number of elected offices and initiatives on the ballot, and penalties for people who knowingly misrepresent their ballot designations. Having survived the recall, Mr. Rocco will most likely run for re-election in 2008 with the ballot designation Trustee, Orange Unified School District. And this time, his ballot designation will be accurate. As you know, the, re the recall failed. It failed, okay? We still have Rocco. Rocco's going to be uh, going for maybe another uh, term in November of 2000, you know, end of the year. Might have four more years. Since my last viewing of Fred's footage on YouTube, Steve Rocco's ability to run for the school board has been postponed. Until then, the cycle will continue. Skaters will keep skating, and uninformed voters will keep voting, hoping for a different outcome. Leaders they can believe in. A few years from now, these kids will be old enough to vote. I wonder if this message will ever reach them. Will these young people be able to break the cycle? Maybe all it takes is falling down one too many times before you realize you need to get up and this time try it differently. For all grenades, I laughed at all his words. I thought he was a bit of the Smith's thing. She sent out her emails to everybody to show up here and say this and say that. You're inspiring fear. You're a bad leader. This is voodoo. This is a voodoo unified school district and it's because of you. Huh? And uh, you complain that I don't call uh, Mr. Godley doctor. I'm willing to call you doctor. Sure I am. Which Dr. Godley? In the voodoo unified school district. And I'm going to come back and sit there because I have more to say, and I can say it a lot longer there than I can here. And when I'm no longer board member, I'll come back and I'll find a nice seat over here, and I'll sit here and I'll be gadfly number one. <laughs>